The Play series by Native Instruments are a relatively new type of contact library that provides an easy way to create. And today I wanna to show you how to separate the samples from the drum versions so that you can manipulate them and affect them as you see fit. Before we get started, don't forget to download my free production starter kit. This kit contains five original loops with stems in all major and minor triad chords and scales in MIDI form. The pack is totally free and you can get it by downloading it from the description down below. Okay, so to better show you the problem, let me create a quick little drum loop here using the newly released 40s very own drum library. So let me go ahead and open that up. Let's go over to contact. I'm gonna go over down to 40s very own drums, load that up. Okay, and these are the samples here. Let's record. From here, let's add a clap and a hi-hat. So let's go ahead and add the clap first. And then finally, the hi-hat. So I've been reluctant to buy any of the play series from Native Instruments and especially the drums because as you can see here, they all get recorded into one track and although this might look good for organizational purposes, it doesn't give you enough control to do things like manipulate the volume or add effects to each of the samples. After some digging though, I was able to figure out how to fix this in Studio One. So what you have to do is first open up an instance of contact and once here, go to the top right portion of the plugin to this little section, this little button and click on that and make sure that outputs is selected if it's not already. If we go back down to the instrument here, you can see that each sound is placed in one of the 16 pads. So what we basically have to do is create enough outputs in contact to match the number of pads. So in this case, 16, and then link them to channels in the Studio One Mixer. So then go ahead and start out by heading down to the output section that we just opened up and click on this little plus button here. You're going to get this pop-up window and here you want to input 16 in the quantity section because you want 16 different outputs, one for each pad. Below that, under the number of channels, you wanna make sure that it is on two. And this is basically telling Contact that you want each track to be a stereo track. And this is important because a lot of the effects in these samples are stereo effects. Finally, make sure to select delete existing channels before creating new ones and hit okay. Once you have your new channels created, the next step here is to rename them so they look a little cleaner. Now, at first you might be tempted to rename them the name of the sample on the current pad, but the reality is that as you switch drum kits here, the samples don't always stay in the same pad. And I can show you that by going over to the kit tab here. As you can see, this is what they look like for this kit. But if I go to the next one, they change. So then what I recommend is that instead you name them output followed by the number. Now I already have this set up. So if I go to mine, you can see here that I have out one through out 16. Finally, so you don't have to do this again, head over to this little button called presets and batch configuration. Click on that and select save output section preset as. From here, feel free to rename this whatever you want. I named mine multi out stereo and hit okay. Now here you can also choose to save the current output selection as a default for any of the available plugin formats, but that is totally up to you. But okay, once this is set up, and saved, this is the way that I would go about using these drum play series libraries. First, pull up an instance of contact and load up your multi-out preset that we just created. Then load up the library that you want to use. So in my case, it was 40's very own drums. And finally, record the drums like we did at the beginning of this video. Once you've recorded the drums, go back to contact and click on this kit tab here to reveal the actual pads of this instrument. Here, take notice of what pads you use. So let's take a listen and see what mine did. So for my pattern, I used a kick, a tom, a clap, and a hi-hat. And what I basically want to do is assign an output for each of these pads. So to do that, click on the first, so kick, go down to this little out uh, drop-down menu. I'm gonna do one, go to my tom, do two, go to my clap, do three, and then go to my hi-hat and do four. Next, for Studio One, go to the top of the plugin here and click on this little arrow pointing to the right. Here, you basically want to check off how many outputs you want. So in my case, it was four, so two, three, and four. And this basically creates the necessary channels in the Studio One mixer, which you will need to individually control the samples. Once here, feel free to go down to the Studio One mixer and then rename these to what they need to be. So kick, tom, clap, and hi-hat. If I go ahead and play my pattern, you can see that they're all now routed individually to each of these channels. 
Now, this could be the end for you. At this point, all the drum samples are separated in the mixer, so if you wanted to add an effect or control the volume for each, you could easily do that now. I like a little bit more control myself, and I also don't like to open up the mixer every time that I want to add an effect, so what I do from here is head over to that track with all the recorded drums, right click, head over to instrument parts, and then select explode pitches to tracks. This basically separates each of the individual sounds that we recorded into its own track. Now to make this easier, you could even map this to a keyboard shortcut or a macro. The very last step here is to make sure that each track is properly routed to its appropriate channel in the mixer. Now you do that by going over to each track and then under the channel section here, right below the inputs and output section, you drop that down and make sure that it matches with the mixer. So kick, yes, tom, tom, clap, clap, and then finally hi-hat and hi-hat. What we just did basically allows you to now open up the inspector window here and add inserts or adjust the volume without having to go back down to the mixer. So then again, at this point, you are all set up to go and now you can add effects and control the volume for each of these drum samples right within the inspector window here so you don't have to keep opening up the mixer. So to give you a quick example, let's go ahead and just add, I don't know, a reverb here to my clap. So let's add a little bit of a vintage verb. Raise the volume. Tom as well. But that's it for me. I'll be dropping a video soon on making a full beat with 40's very own keys and drums. So if that video is up, you can watch that right over here. If not, then there should be another one there that is just as good. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you on the next one.